Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Device management refers to all of the tools, capabilities, and processes necessary to support IoT solutions effectively at scale. Included are processes like quickly and securely onboarding new devices, automatically identifying device issues, and other things. Let's get started. First, let's talk about some principles of IoT device management. The term device management is relatively vague and could mean many things, so I'll start this chapter off by defining what I mean when I talk about device management. The device management timeline begins once a device enters circulation. The hardware has been manufactured, the device is assembled, software is in production, and the device is on the shelves. If we think of device management, as starting from the time they power on a device for the first time, and the end to be the moment that it is decommissioned, these following principles will apply to device management. Provisioning and authentication, configuration and control, monitoring and diagnostics, software maintenance and updates. The last three principles are cyclical and will repeat until the end of life for the device. As mentioned many times throughout this course, these concepts and others are not new, nor are they unique to IoT. It is just that IoT introduces complexity to achieve these very necessary aspects of systems and system security. Provisioning and authentication. When adding new IoT devices, you want to make sure that only trusted, secure devices can be added to the entire platform. Device authentication is the act of securely establishing the identity of the device to ensure that it can be trusted. A cloud-hosted service that the device connects to needs to know that the device is actually a genuine device, is running trusted software, and is working on behalf of a trusted user. Provisioning is the process of enrolling the device into the system. And authentication is part of that process where only devices that present the proper credentials can be registered. The exact details of this process can vary widely based on implementation. However, in most applications, the device being deployed is loaded with a certificate or key stored in a secure memory area that identifies it as authentic, and it knows the server URL to connect to in order to enroll itself. When the device is first plugged in and connected to the local network, it calls home, and then, based on the credentials and other information, such as the model and serial number of the device, it might receive further configuration data. To prevent counterfeit devices from joining a network, or to limit the opportunity for network attacks, it is important to authenticate devices attempting to join IoT networks and subsequently connect only authorized devices. The standard mechanism to securely authenticate clients connecting to a server is Transport Layer Security, or TLS, client-side authentication. To implement such authentication in an IoT network, the appropriate certificate authority, or CA, usually the IoT device provider, issues a unique X509 certificate to each device and the associated private key that functions as a unique security credential for the device itself. Once the certificate and associated private key are stored on the IoT device, it may use them during the TLS client authentication process to securely join the network. The act of supplying the necessary credentials to a device joining a network is known as provisioning. It is important to have a user transparent provisioning process in order to minimize onboarding challenges or security lapses. Therefore, Zero-touch provisioning, which eliminates the need for any user interaction, is highly desired in IoT applications. A common but challenging certificate provisioning approach is to physically add credentials to a device during manufacturing. It is critical to prevent unauthorized parties from learning the values of private keys. Manufacturing processes that involve the management of private keys must be highly secure and completely trustworthy. Such a requirement rules out many, if not all, low-cost contract manufacturers. 
but the need to keep many classes of IoT devices low cost approaches that entail using these types of manufacturers. One provisioning process that has gained traction is pre-populating secure elements with certificates at a secure location, then shipping the secure elements to a low cost manufacturer, which assembles the complete IoT device. Secure elements are chips that provide hardware-based crypto accelerators and secure key storage, sometimes augmented with additional protections against hardware tampering and other side channel attacks. Back in chapter seven on physical security, we discuss the device as a whole. The secure element approach is a means of physical security at a smaller scale where only individual parts of the device are secured physically. While pre-populating secure elements with certificates enables the low cost manufacturers without compromising security, this approach obviously adds to the product and manufacturing cost. The secure elements adds to the bill of materials and then pre-populating the certificate is an additional manufacturing step that requires a trustworthy and often high cost environment. In this section, I'll continue to discuss device management with configuration management. Devices are imperfect when they're deployed in the field, whether it's a tracker on a mobile asset like a car or a sensor for a remote monitoring system, such as a refrigeration system. After deployment, there may be configurable device settings that you want to adjust over time, such as decreasing the frequency which your trackers report position messages to increase battery life. The ability to configure and control devices even after deployment is therefore critical to ensuring functionality, improving performance, and protecting from security threats. You may also want the ability to reset the devices to their factory default configuration when they are decommissioned. When a device or asset gets onboarded, configuration starts, as does device monitoring, primarily in the scope of device status. However, configuration and control need to be further fine-tuned beyond the default settings in function of your IoT project and needs. Moreover, you will want to check for potential firmware updates, intervene if there are device status issues, and check or change configuration settings while enabling control possibilities required for device maintenance and management. It's here that, among others, over-the-air possibilities become important, for instance, for the settings, monitoring, and diagnostics. The latter is also important for security reasons, as diagnostics can point to security issues. Unless you want to pre-configure every device that you ship individually with the specifics as to where it will be installed and how it will be used, you will be shipping a device with some sort of generic configuration. Most of the time, your device will need to be further configured by the end user with attributes such as its name and location and application-specific settings. In a fleet management example, a device is used to track the location and certain on-vehicle telemetry and report that information back to the cloud via a cellular connection. Certain parameters will need to be written once the device is installed, such as the unique ID of the trailer or truck, perhaps the license plate or VIN number. Other configuration settings, such as the amount of time between sending position messages, are also determined and programmed into the device. To implement certain control capability into a system, you will want to remotely reset the device so as to achieve a known good state and recover from errors or implement a new configuration change. You may also want to be able to reset the device to a factory default configuration, which is useful when you want to decommission a device or as a more invasive way to recover from unknown error conditions. Monitoring and Diagnostics in addition to configuring certain device settings, there may also be unforeseen operational issues or software bugs that you will need to address. But to address them, you need to identify them in the first place. Therefore, the ability to monitor and detect when something is amiss, such as higher than normal CPU utilization, is essential to proactively identifying and diagnosing potential bugs or issues. Device management software can provide program logs needed to make diagnoses. Nothing really new here. However, the key to developing your monitoring strategy lies in the scope. Remember that these devices are traversing data across multiple architecture layers and networks, many of which you have no control over. 
monitoring at each layer of the architecture is essential to providing defense in depth. Software maintenance and updates. The ability to update and maintain remote device software securely is thus one of the most important components of good device management. An over-the-air update or OTA update is a mechanism for remotely updating internet connected hardware with new settings, software, or firmware. The OTA update mechanism is a core part of a system's architecture, with the remote hardware device being responsible for identifying and applying updates to itself, and the cloud server responsible for distributing updates to its connected hardware clients. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to OTA. The right approach for a given IoT project depends on the nature of the hardware under consideration, the overall system architecture, the abilities of the team building the product, and the product itself. The most common OTA update scenarios tend to be device to cloud OTA updates, when the device itself is internet connected and capable of receiving new firmware images from a remote server. These images can contain updates to both the device's underlying hardware capabilities as well as the application running on top. Gateway to Cloud OTA Updates An internet-connected gateway responsible for managing a fleet of local edge devices is capable of receiving updates from a remote server that alters any or all of its software application, the software application's host environment, and or the gateway's device firmware. Device to Gateway to Cloud OTA Updates an internet-connected gateway is responsible for managing a fleet of locally connected devices, which in turn are capable of receiving remote firmware updates via the gateway. Going into the technical details of each OTA architecture is outside of the scope of this course, but what's more important are the numerous design considerations you should be paying attention to. Regardless of which OTA update approach applies to the IoT product or system that you're building. Effective IoT management is a foundational element for any successful solution. All the major cloud providers included in their IoT platform offerings, whether it's Google with IoT Core, Microsoft with Azure IoT Hub, or Amazon with AWS IoT, their device management offerings enable IoT solutions providers quickly and securely to provision, authenticate, configure, control, monitor, and maintain the IoT devices used in their solutions. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.